All right, guys. Hey, what's up? J Cat Two here. Welcome back to the channel for all ten of my subscribers. Hopefully, I uh, my subscribers go up, right? I'm already starting the channel. I only got like two videos on it. They're kind of boring too. I've been told that I need to talk more, but whatever. I want to see this fishing, right? So we're gonna give it. I'm gonna give a tour of my boat. Um, it's a 2019 Native Kayak Blue Lagoon 10.5, guys. Um, I purchased this in December on on accident with the firm. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the firm. They're pretty awesome. It's a payment thing, but they don't give you like a heads up like hey, you're gonna purchase. I actually, I actually hit the button here like congratulations. So I got to put on my Titan, which I wanted anyways, no regrets. Uh, so start. We'll start in the front. Work our way to the back in the front here. Uh, just to throw it in there. I got the net. Your typical net you buy at Walmart or Academy, it's the orange uh, flotation net. The handle actually comes to about right here. So I put this PVC pipe on there. I basically ran the cord from underneath, clipped it here, wrapped it in duct, uh, electrical tape, and I use it as a handle. This net is awesome. The only thing is if you get, like I fish a lot, crankbaits, lipless crankbaits, uh, treble hook stuff, it's gonna, that thing is, man, sometimes it gets, it takes forever to get these super hooks out. So other than that, net is awesome. So starting in the front, the very front, you guys, some of you guys that own native Titans are familiar with this handle. I have no idea why Titans, why native put the handle going vertical with the kayak. Um, so with that being said, I kind of just put a piece of rope on here with a piece of PVC pipe and I use it to pick it up and haul it wherever I need to go. Works also, no issues there. Starting with the front hatch, uh, you guys are gonna see this orange. It did not, it did not come with the natives. I purchased this, uh, actually my wife did. Um, it's orange marine mat. You can get it from marine mat. Oh. It's pretty much cosmetic more than anything. It doesn't really serve any much of a purpose. It looks cool though, I like it. Uh, they got a variety of colors if you guys want to check them out. Starting with the hatch, uh, they did come with this rope uh, attached to the hatch so it doesn't like take off on you in the water. On the inside, this all changes. So I got this old fishing net that I took off of an old fishing net. I pretty much put it around here and typed it in, uh, secured it in with a bunch of uh, individual zip ties going all the way around so the net doesn't come out. The net pretty much holds everything inside the kayak in this one spot so, so stuff's not floating, uh, traveling throughout the inside of the kayak like taking off while I'm on the water. Uh, plastic box from Walmart. I got various plastics in there. Some more plastics, more plastics. I got my flag, it's a busy pole, Yak Attack busy pole that I have here. If I can get it out. Some more baits. I got my dry bag. I highly recommend a dry bag of some kind. So you can keep extra. What I keep in here is I keep batteries for my lights, batteries for flashlights, anything I need. I do keep wipers in here as well. Those have come in handy on more than one occasion. Uh, and along with a variety of other stuff. I got my turkey baser. I do get water in the Titan due to the, I believe it's the back hatch and the Bernie Pro rudder system. I usually get anywhere from like maybe a quarter of a gallon to a half a gallon in there. So I kind of just use this to squirt it out. Uh, works pretty good. Other than that, the net keeps everything in there like awesomely. It doesn't shift at all in the kayak. It works awesome. So hatch just goes right back on top. No issues there. Oh, bear with me guys, sorry. Let's get that bad boy in there. All right, so this is the, the drive, the native Titan drive. I do have these Yak Attack pedal holders. I use these for my net. Um, it kind of just screws in there. So this, these crank arms are kind of different colors. I actually had an incident on Decker Lake in Austin, Texas. I was pre-fishing for a tournament. The pedal in this crank arm ended up wallering out. So the, the hole here was like useless. I got stuck like a mile away from the ramp and I pretty much had to use my paddle. Uh, so with that being said, I always carry your paddle. I don't care if you got a, 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 a pedal drive. So I ended up contacting Native. Native, They were gonna send me these crank arms, but it was gonna take like a while. And the tournament was like literally like three or four days later. Um, I took it to a local bike shop here where I live at and they ended up having a crank arm that matched perfectly with the right with the left side 40 bucks they re they reinstalled the crank arm reinstalled my pedals put loctite on her which i didn't do so put loctite on your pedals these are aftermarket rock brothers orange pedals to match the rest of the kayak they hooked me up guys and they had me ready to go for the tournament so it was awesome so this of course is not a native titan it was part of the trail drive it's separate i did however order extra crank arms which i do have but i don't really see a need to put them on right now so i'll just keep it like that Weed guard, I ordered it. The 2019s do not come with the weed guard, so I had to order one. I believe the 2020s do come with one. I got that from Headwaters Kayak in Cali. Uh, starting here with the seat. This is the Native Titan seat. 
I did order these three inch seat risers from I believe Jeff Brummett. Uh, all this, everything here will be linked in the description. These are the three inch seat risers. The, re the reason why I got three inches is of course I like to sit high on the kayak. This kayak is stable enough for that. And the VersaStack from Craftsman. This thing is awesome. Uh, it comes red, I kind of painted it orange. So the way this thing works is it's just basically a two drawer system. Got a lot of compartments. I got uh, weights, or uh, my fish scale. I got markers for tournaments, uh, Gerber, a uh, headlamp, a bunch of other stuff. I mean, you guys could put whatever you want. It's pretty much what I keep and everything changes. Of course, if I need to change out a bait, I'll dump them in here and, and get to retine. That way I'm not really focused on anything else. These drawers are sick, man. I love them. They are, I totally highly recommend them, the Versa, the Versa stack. Underneath, I got a, uh, a H2O Express. This is my terminal tackle box that I keep. Slides in, doesn't come out. It's awesome. On the sides here, I keep two, uh, I keep a catch cord and I got a hog trough here. I have had the hog troughs break on me, so I have a, a secondary backup. Some tournaments allow the hog troughs, some tournament, or require the hog troughs. Others really don't care. I prefer the catch boards. I believe uh, some of the tournament series, you know, they won't allow catch boards as of yet. Hopefully that changes. Uh, so these are the, the paddle holders. Native Titan kayak comes with these. I pretty much keep my paddle on here, which again, I highly recommend it. Uh, seat cushion to sit on top. Got that off Amazon. Lumbar support, got it off Amazon. These seats, they come with these little compartments here. I basically could have fish, uh, some fish trips there. And I got some pliers here for hooks. Other than that, the way the Versus stack is, I don't know if you guys can see it really good. I got some L brackets here and with some zip ties and I basically screwed it in. It's the same on both sides. So it works awesome. It doesn't go nowhere. We'll start, uh, so back here, I got the boondocks. I was gonna talk about the motor, but we'll, we'll do that separately. As far as the, the landing gear, I got the boondocks HD landing gear. I These are the HD, um, brackets i did have the single brackets which is basically one bolt and one bolt um due to the weight in the back i guess the single brackets they like broke off the rails the t-bolts basically snapped i didn't know that i didn't do too much research as far as installing the the hd mounts so i ended up putting the hd mounts i got a hold of uh boondocks um they sent me some additional hd mounts for free i mean they're awesome they responded and like within a week i had these brackets since I put these on, it's held the weight awesome. Like I've gone over rocks, sand. I've traveled for like a quarter of a mile, believe it or not, dragging the kayak because of parking. This thing is held up awesome. I got the seat tug wheels installed on it. Not the factory ones that the Boondocks comes with. Other than that, I highly recommend this. I haven't really tried the native sidekick, but this one is freaking awesome. I highly recommend it. Um, back here, if you can see the seat, this is just extra extra tackle thing that I have. Uh, Plano boxes, I'm in love with those. If you guys can tell, I'll, right now I'll show you the inside of the black pack. Inside here, I got the battery. This is for my fish finder, along with additional cores that I kind of just stuck in there. Some people, I have seen them kind of install a lid here somehow, and they use it to like keep waters and stuff in. Um, I just kind of use it for that. So. Right here, this is your basic battery box. I have a 12 volt 54 amp Dakota lithium battery. Awesome battery, um, the best. Uh, pretty expensive, I believe 500 bucks, but it's totally worth it. So getting to the black pack, this is my black pack here. Pull it out, I keep uh, tackle in there. That stuff changes, guys. Sometimes I'll carry every single thing I have with me going to a lake that I'm not familiar with, pre-fishing before attorney. If I'm on a familiar lake, you know, I'll downsize a whole bunch, especially when by poles. I got 10 rod holders attached to it. As you can see, I got 10 poles, right? So these, I basically, I kind of want to get to this. These are some bungees that I ordered off Amazon. Um, they, I kind of drilled a hole inside the, the, the pole and it kind of wraps around, inside the, the holder, wraps around my fishing pole and clips, clips right on uh, to the ball. So the reason I got those is these poles, I mean, for an example, this is the Mojo Glass, uh, Mojo Glass Rod. This thing was 150 bucks, and I got it paired with this uh, Corrado 7.4. It's my lipless setup. Um, you're, you're talking about 300 bucks, 350 bucks right here. It's inevitable. We guys, we're kayak fishermen. We're gonna fall. We're gonna tip over. So if I'm ever in a kind of sketchy situation, 20 mile an hour winds, 15 miles an hour, you know, who knows? And I gotta get back to the boat launch, and I feel that something crazy is gonna happen. I will strap my rods in. If it's calm, chill, I can deal with it. I won't always have to be strapping them in and, and taking them out, strapping them in, taking them out. You know, that's gonna be, that's gonna get frustrating. So I have them there just in case. Uh, I actually saw that on a separate video from a guy. It was another guy's idea. And it's, 
freaking awesome, man. I mean, we're gonna fall, right? So why not keep your investment intact with your kayak? The black pack, I have it. The tights come with this bungee system here. I got the battery uh, strapped down as well as the black pack up here. Hopefully it kind of stays intact. So getting to the motor, let's get to the motor right here. I got a Minn Kota. I believe it's a 40 pound thrust. So the way I got it set up is that's in the down position, of course. I got this 550 cord black tied up to a little carabiner here with the eye bolt, all this stuff. I mean, you can get at your local hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. Uh, I got the I got the cord running through an eye bolt, a uh, Yak Attack eye bolt. You got on Amazon, eBay, wherever you find them at. I got two. It keeps the cord pretty much in line. This is some old hose at uh, your auto parts store. They sell this like uh, yeah, it has a fuel, inje fuel injection hose. I've kind of like cut it up. I had extra and some shrink wrap and stuff. I made like a little loop. So if you look at the motor, I pull it forward, motor goes up, and I rest it on this one inch ball that I have right here. So while I'm not using the motor, of course, I have it rigged up. When I'm ready to take off, I'll just pull it forward and drop the motor and take off. So I have it hooked up here. This is a conduit box I bought at Home Depot. I took the whole head off the motor and there's like that little, that solenoid that's in there where all the wires, I'm not too sure on the, the nomenclature for like the name, right? So this is a knob I purchased on eBay. It was pretty hard. I went to go try to get like these oven knobs and stuff like that, but they do not fit this shaft right here. It's a half moon shaft. I ordered half moon knobs and they would not go on. So I found this on eBay. This is for your, like the actual boat, the bigger Charlie motors, and it's got the speeds on it. Of course, these speeds do not correlate with my, with my motor there. So anyways, it's plugged in, it's off. If I wanna, I'll show, I'll pick it up so you guys can see like the actual motor. So that's of course off. I got one speed, two, three, four, five, and then all the way back to zero, and then I got three in reverse. One, two, three, right? So that's off. So let's say I'm traveling, I got this kill switch installed, uh, got it off eBay. This kind of clips up, I kind of got it clipped up to my jacket. So let's say we're taking off, as you can see, motor's on. Um, if I need to, for some reason, kill it like super quick, or if I fall off, you know, God forbid I fall off, kill switch comes out, motor turns off. Everything's terminated. You get back on, put the kill switch in, it's uh, ready to go, so off. So this little conduit box, I mean, you guys can do it however. I just kind of rigged it up and I got it attached with, uh, I believe it's a one inch ball. I got a one inch ball on the bottom of it with a little ram extension arm and on the side. So that's how I got it attached. It comes off, comes on. Some uh, tournaments allow the motor, some don't. So of course I won't always use it. Um, the motor, as far as the motor goes, while it's pinned down, so right here, these motors come with these little locking pins on the inside. I pulled that locking pin out. Reason being is when I'm traveling, I have hit a bunch of stumps that of course you can't see right while you're traveling. It'll hit my motor, motor will just pop up and pop back down from the weight and I'll continue traveling. I mean, it works flawlessly. As for the mount, this mount guys, we I had it custom welded. Uh, I have a buddy that does welding for a hobby. Um, we kind of hooked this up at a scrap metal. I got these knobs off eBay. The Titans come with uh, two pre-drilled holes here. So I believe these are quarter inch for the, as far as the bolts goes, but these are quarter inch knobs that I got off eBay. And I got the knobs here that go into some T-bolts on this back rail. So I put four holes in this mount. It ain't going nowhere. This mount guys was free. Uh, there are some mounts on Facebook that people sell. Yak Attack has one. I believe, Yak, I believe it's Yak Attack. Uh, they're like 150, 200 bucks. This thing was free. And it works freaking flawlessly. It's, uh, no complaints whatsoever if you guys know a welder or a welding shop they usually charge like anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks a weld i mean you can get one of these set up for like 60 bucks at the most with some scrap metal just get some quick measurements and dude you'll save like a bunch of money as far as the back goes i ordered these bike handles i kind of slipped them on there to give it like extra i guess extra cosmetic stuff it looks cool this is my flag that i have in the back from when i travel working on this side Again, the marine mat. This I got my GoPro hooked up here. This is a Sherline painter's pole. I bought it at Home Depot. This is it, it closes in, it goes out, it goes even further than that. This is just the distance that I use. It was 10 bucks at Home Depot. I just kind of spray painted it. I got a cord going down from my GoPro that plugs into my battery here. This box I got at 
I believe it was Academy or Walmart. It's the battery box. I ordered this uh, this electrical strip from Amazon. I believe it was like 10, 15 bucks. But it's got multiple USBs. It's got the cigarette lighter here, ready to go. Turn off, on. Works like a champ. No complaints at all. Uh, working on this side. This is the next level design handle from Ryan Garrett, I believe, on Facebook. Uh, he will be in the description if you guys want to purchase it. It is sick. It, the factory handle that it comes with is plastic. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the handles, but at the bottom of the handle inside here, it has like a star at the bottom. The plastic ones, due to turn it so much, it'll actually like rip up the plastic. So this is kind of the aluminum, I'm sorry, the aluminum, and it works flawlessly. It's freaking awesome. It's easy to turn the rudders. I did get the, I don't know if I showed you guys, I did get the, the boondocks rudder back here, as well as the Burley Pro steering system up here. Before I had the stock rudder and the stock lines from Native, and guys, they suck. Uh, you pay, I paid $2,700 for this kayak, and 2019, I'm sure they've upgraded it since then, but the line that it came with was horrible. I would try to turn and it would basically slip with the, the stock rudder on there. I, I spent some money, I invested in the, the rudder as well as the the steering upgrade working up here i got uh i mean this is kind of a little slot that the seat comes with i keep mosquito repellent sunscreen in there this is all the wiring for my fish finder i have the yak attack fish finder mount the the rectangular fish finder mount this mount is sick this stuff adjusts as your as to your preference of course you just unscrew it and you'll pick it up slant it however you want it um it's easy to turn however you want it to turn if you want to show somebody something if you want to uh, turn it towards a different way because of the sun if you want to take it out you basically just pull it pull the pull it off pull this out pull it off i can unplug everything put this in my truck and i'm good to go just leave the, the wires hanging there um i had a 1.5 ram ball the ram ball worked pretty good but this thing is just way better so it's way better i highly recommend this uh coming down to the transducer i got the yak tech switchblade I keep it down, it does not interfere with the kayak. Side scan works awesome. This is the Raymarine Element 9 inch. Awesome fish finder, I recommend it. Um, the switch blade, if I ever come up to high grass or stumps or whatever, I need to pull it up. I just reach over, picks right up, it's out of the way, I'm good to go. When I'm ready to take off, it drops down and I'm back in the water ready to go. Other than that, that's pretty much the whole kayak, guys. Um, a lot of these ideas I got off of YouTube. Uh, mobbing outdoors out of Cali, Greg Blanchard was pretty good. Amongst a, a handful of other guys that have posted this kind of stuff, I just figured I'd post the way I kind of did things on here too. When I first purchased this kayak, I was trying to like look for like a whole bunch of stuff. Thanks to those guys, amongst a bunch of other ones, I kind of got ideas from everybody and put the kayak together. I'm still kind of going over some stuff. I have missed quite a few amount of bucks there. I always hear stuff from the camera lady there about it the good thing for me is i got a pretty good job and i also can work part-time jobs whenever i want so that fuels my fishing problem i have as far as the baits and poles go other than that this kayak guys i'm six foot 230 pounds the 10.5 is sick i can stand up no issues high wind i don't care i can stand up and it, it's totally stable it is a slow kayak as far as the motor goes when i have it turned up all the way to five i will get up to about four miles an hour if I pedal, it'll bump me up to like 4.2. Um, but that's as fast as it's gonna go. Uh, that's the only downfall about this kayak. It's a huge, it's a tank. So you're gonna travel slow. Again, um, this is pretty much everything. If you guys got any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them or direct you to where I kind of like purchase everything. Look through YouTube, guys. I mean, YouTube's awesome. Everybody that's posting stuff about natives or even like different kayaks. They, they have different ideas that they've done. I pulled from everybody, man. It's I'm pretty happy with this setup as far as the tournament stuff goes. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully, I'll be fishing here soon, and I'll, I'll get better with my fishing videos. I only got two posted as of now. I'm told that I need to talk more in the video, so I'll try to work on that. I'm not really too much of a talk person. The camera there is kind of like even missing looks. Anyways, Native Titan, guys, highly recommend it. It's expensive. But if you're kind of looking for a kayak and you want to invest some time, you're going to invest a whole lot of time, especially even with the tournaments. Definitely, definitely highly recommend it. Uh, I started off with the Pelican Catch 100, then came up to this. This is 
it for me. It's pretty awesome. So, again, guys, got questions or whatever, hit me up. I'll be happy to answer anything you got. I'll point you in the right direction of where I purchased stuff. If I didn't mention something, let me know, and I'll be happy to address it there. But other than that, guys, I'll see you soon with the next fishing video. Peace out.